So we're here today to talk about central bank digital currencies. Uh, central bank digital currencies is a pretty hot topic at the moment uh, because uh, Christian Lagarde from uh, the European Central Bank has uh, just made a statement that uh, the EU should be thinking about uh, moving to a digital euro. Very early stages of, of planning, but it's uh, but it's certainly becoming more of a hot topic. So, so what are um, CBDCs? So. Central bank currencies are essentially a digital version of um, cash or central bank reserves. So uh, the money that your commercial bank holds at the uh, central bank or the cash that you have in your pocket. Why do we need them? That's probably a, a slightly more complicated question. Uh, so uh, really there's, there's two main things that seem to be happening uh, in the market or two main reasons why people are looking at central bank digital currencies. And the first is people are moving away from cash. So uh, if you look at Sweden, Sweden's always the example that gets quoted uh, uh, for people to look at uh, statistics of a cashless society. And they're down to, I think now, under 13% of all face-to-face uh, -face transactions use cash. And that's down from 39% um, just in 2010 to 2018, 19. So that's a really significant drop. Um, and most developed economies are kind of moving in the same direction. They're, they're, they're reducing the amount of cash that they have in society. And actually, cash is the only way that most people have access to central bank money. Uh, in in uh, circulation in, in the economy, there's basically two types of money. Uh, central bank money, which is money issued by the central bank, surprisingly, uh, and commercial bank money. And commercial bank money is uh, money that's issued by the bank that you bank with. But it's basically a, um, it's, it's, it's you, that bank's liabilities or their ability to um, meet their liabilities in the short term. So they have to be able to pay out um, uh, 100 days worth of uh, liabilities. But other than that, they can print money as much as they like. The other type of money is central bank uh, uh, money. And that's typically uh, the reserve accounts that um, those commercial banks have with the central bank. And for most people, cash, the cash that they have in, in their pocket. But for central bank funds, um, that's considered safer than commercial bank money because, you know, commercial banks go bust, you know, things happen. But for a central uh, bank money to be worthless, the economy has to uh, disappear. Uh, and then we've probably got other problems to worry about. So central banks are worried, not worried, worried is the wrong word, are looking at how they implement monetary policy um, without cash in society. So uh, most organisations, um, most people um, use commercial bank funds for their everyday uh, uh, work. Um, but actually um, the interest rate that's charged on reserves and central bank funds is actually the way that uh, most central banks implement monetary policy and so on. So um, the only way that we have access to that is by cash. Central bank digital currency is meant to be a digital alternative to, to cash. Um, uh, and it provides a lot of advantages. So um, digital currency, uh, obviously, whether it's commercial bank or central bank funds, you know, you can use it at a distance. Um, you can use it online. You can, uh, you can use it uh, across borders if, if required. Um, that's obviously much harder to do with physical cash. Um, there are all sorts of issues with transporting physical cash, not just um, the, the legality of crossing, uh, uh, of transporting it across borders, but also the, uh, just the risk uh, associated with it. And obviously that disappears if you're doing this in some sort of electronic um, form. The other thing that's, uh, I think, probably more significant for the central banks is uh, the rise of so-called private um, uh, currencies, private digital currencies. So I'm thinking here particularly things like Libra um, from Facebook, um, which is a privately held um, uh, digital currency. They've pegged that against a basket of, uh, of traditional currencies. So in theory, it's more stable than things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and, uh, and things like that. But obviously it's outside the control of a central bank. So from a central bank point of view, that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, they want to be able to implement monetary policy, as I said, through use of, uh, of uh, central bank currency. Uh, and if it's controlled by Facebook, um, that's a more difficult thing to, uh, to, to do. So from a, from a central bank point of view, they want to look at how um, they can use uh, central bank digital currency to continue to implement monetary policy to the retail uh, uh, customer.